President Pence, thank you for joining us. I want to start with the big Supreme Court decisions, uh, specifically, you, John. specifically the decision uh, ending affirmative action as we know it. Uh, I understand you fully support this decision, but if the end result is that America's most selective colleges and universities have fewer black and Hispanic students, is that a problem for America? Well, look, I, I think uh, I couldn't be more proud of the progress we've made toward a more perfect union in, in my lifetime. The, the Civil Rights Acts in the 1960s. And, and I, I think there was a time for affirmative action, John, uh, where to open the doors of our colleges and universities to minority students and particularly African-Americans who may have been denied access. But I think those days are over. You know, it was Justice uh, Sandra Day O'Connor, who more than 20 years ago said that she thought affirmative action would go away in 25 years. It, it went away a little sooner than that. And I think that's a tribute uh, to our minority students, the incredible accomplishments of, of African-Americans and Asian-Americans uh, in this country and Hispanic-Americans uh, speaks for itself. And I really believe that the decision by the Supreme Court today uh, was an acknowledgement of the incredible progress uh, that uh, minority Americans have made, their extraordinary uh, educational achievements and uh, I, I have every confidence that uh, that African Americans and other minority Americans are going to continue to to compete and succeed in universities around the country. But we're going to do it with a colorblind society that I I think is the aspiration of every American. Uh, but respectfully, you didn't answer my question. We, we've seen what has happened in nine states that have banned affirmative action. We've seen in Michigan and California and Florida that after affirmative action was done away with. The result was that you saw fewer Hispanic and black students at their elite universities. So again, my question to you, if that is the result here, is that a concern? Is that a concern for you? I, I just, look, I, I haven't seen your studies. I don't know the numbers. First job I ever I'm, had was as an admissions counselor at the college I graduated from. And well, I, I, I'm just very confident with the progress that we have made now in 2023, a fourth of the way through the 21st century, the achievements of African-Americans, uh, leaving aside the, the, the achievements of the first African-American president uh, and African-Americans all across the country. I'm just I'm just very confident uh, that African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans and other minorities are going to be able to compete and succeed. But we're going to be able to do it uh, with uh, with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s vision in place that will be judged not by uh, the content, uh, uh, or be judged by, not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character and by our own academic uh, performance. So, so why did the court carve out the military academies? This ruling does not apply uh, to, to our military academies. As Justice Jackson said, uh, one standard for the boardroom, another standard for the bunker. Doesn't she have a case, a, a point there? Well, I, look, I, this probably won't be the first time that I disagree uh, with our newest justice, but uh, John, come on. Uh, the American military, and you know, I've got two service members uh, in our immediate family. The American military has been uh, has been an instrument of advancing equality uh, since virtually the founding uh, of this country. I mean, there were African American officers uh, in New England regiments in the Revolutionary War that we'll be celebrating on Independence Day, and the military has opened its door. Uh, you know, I celebrate and uh, I'm proud that uh, we appointed him uh, to the Joint Chiefs. I celebrate our new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the first the first member to come up through the service ranks uh, as an African-American member of the Joint or chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Colin, Colin Powell preceded him, but uh, came essentially uh, from uh, from private life after a long career in the, in the military. So I think the military has been a place where the doors have been open for a long time. But, 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 but sir, what, 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 and they've distinguished themselves with sacrifices and service for generations. I know they always will. Totally understand all of what you just said, but this decision does not apply to the military academies. Under this decision, the military academies can still use race as a factor in admissions. Shouldn't if you agree that this is the way it should be for, for, for universities across the country, should it also apply uh, to the military academies? Why the carve-out? Well, I, 
you know, I'd refer your your viewers to the decision itself. And uh, but I just have to tell you, I, I'm so pleased to see uh, the Supreme Court so strengthened by three of the conservative justices that we appointed this week live up to in this case and in and other critical cases the, the a, a vision for this care, this country that is really grounded in freedom uh, and in the equality of opportunity for every American. So I, look, I, I, I'm very confident our military is going to continue to distinguish themselves and be that be that agent of opportunity for Americans of every background that want to put on the uniform of the United States. Uh, I, I respect uh, the decisions that they make. So, so let me ask you. you would, uh